Atlanta. This is WICR. Hello, Iona College. Welcome back to the Sports Vault. Jersey Joe and Big Shot Rob back in action, and I could not be more excited to be on the air. We've normally done our, our whole um, history together. has been Our show's always been on a Friday. So we've never had an opportunity to come on the air the day before the NBA season. Now, I know everybody not, might not be the biggest basketball fan, but Rob and I are just huge, huge NBA fans. So we thought, what a better way to go on this Monday than to go over the season preview, to go over everything you want to know. So Rob and I, last night, we did the big show prep. We have all the teams ranked from the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference, 1-8, to eight, the top teams. So Rob, let's start off with the East. We'll start off with our eighth seeds. I'm going to kick it off. I have the New York Knicks, your New York Knicks, with the eighth seed. The main reasons for me, I mean, I think Phil Jackson has made really good moves in the offseason, and his presence alone really changes things. The Knicks, my problem with them for a while has been just weak leadership, instability from the front office. And look, folks, leadership matters in life, and it matters in sports. Bringing in a guy like Phil Jackson, he's just such a big person in the room he's just he controls things I really like bringing in Phil Jackson there I think it's going to really help and I like Derek Fisher a lot too I think he's a good guy the right man for the job if he can properly institute the, the triangle offense here's my concern with the Knicks is Carmelo is always going to be the problem because to run the triangle, the ball has to move. Ball movement is critical to the triangle offense, and Carmelo is the ultimate ball stopper. And it's hard to see a 29-year-old like him change his game dramatically. It's possible, but I just think at the end of the day, we always know what Carmelo is, and to run the triangle, I just don't think he's a right, the right piece to fit it. But the East, there's a dramatic drop-off after the top three seeds. I definitely think the Knicks have a legit chance to get in and get that eighth spot. Joe, for my eighth seed, I went with the Detroit Pistons. I don't even have my Knicks making it to the playoffs this That's year. That's a little surprising, but yeah, I, I don't think the Pistons is a bad one. Um, I went with the Pistons. First of all, you're under first-year head coach Van Gundy, and he's really going to help change this team around. Brandon Jennings, I think he'll get him to play the actual role of a point guard. One thing with Brandon Jennings, he needs to stop learning with chucking up shots, and that's one thing that's killed him in his career. And now he has to work with this unit of Josh Smith, Andre Drummond, and Greg Monroe. I like the depth on this roster, picking up Jody Meeks in the offseason, great three-point shooter, and adding a guy like Karan Butler. I see this team finishing eighth. They're not going to go far. In the, they're going to get knocked out in the playoffs, but I do see them improving this year. Now, I, I think the big thing for me with the Pistons is you look at Van Gundy. He's never had a losing season as a head coach in the NBA. That's got to mean something. But the thing I worry about with the Pistons is it's a weird roster. I mean, especially you look at that front line, Josh Smith, Andre Drummond, and Greg Monroe, all good players, but that's a lot. There's not a lot of room to, for flexibility there. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a lot of big bodies right there clogging up the middle. Not a lot of room for ball movement and things like that. So that's the only problem I have, but I, I, I think Van Gundy, I'm always think that he's going to do something interesting with that team. We'll see, though. Going to the seventh seed, we have the I have the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, you look at this team last year, Al Horford is out, which was huge. If Al Horford was healthy, Healthy, they probably would have beaten the Pacers in the first round. But, I mean, look at this starting lineup. Jeff Teague, Kyle Korver, Demary Car Carroll, Paul Millsap, and Al Horford. I think Horford's return is just going to be really big for this team. With him, they should be able to secure the seventh seed. I also have the Hawks, Joe, at number seven. When you look at this roster, one person you have to focus on, you have to give a lot of credit to Kyle Korver, what he did last year. Shot an amazing point. 472 from the three point line. The guy has such an amazing shot. And you know what? You look into the equation. Al Horford's out last year. If he's in that playoff series versus Indiana, they definitely beat them. And Paul Millsap, after the year he had last year, he's going to have a good second year. And those two in the backcourt are going to really kill you. We're agreed on that one. Now let's go to the number six seed, the Toronto Raptors. I think Dwayne Casey, their head coach, did a really good job last year. I mean, overall, I, I kind of like their starting lineup a lot. You point guard Kyle Lowry, shooting guard Terrence Ross, small forward DeMar DeRozan, power forward Amir Johnson, and their center, very underrated, Jonas Valanciunas, very tough guy, rebounds the ball very well. And it all starts from their point guard, 
guard Kyle Lowry. Really good player. Tough, quick, versatile. Really good guy, but I don't like the depth on this team. They have a very good change of pace point guard in Grievous Vasquez, um, but aside from that, not a lot of depth to like on this team. But it's the East. It's weak. The Raptors had a good year last year. I think they're going to have another nice year and return with the sixth seed. I have to agree with you on this one, Joe. I also won with Toronto. But the thing I'm very worried with is also with depth, Joe. They really, this offseason, didn't go out to pick anybody up. They should have picked up a nice six-man to come off the bench, nice sharpshooter. Failed to do that. But I don't see Toronto going that far this year, but I like their roster yet again this year. 100% agree, and that, that's a good point I didn't even think about. There's not a lot of good shooting on this team, especially from the three-point range, and we're going to get to a couple other teams, and we'll see that's a big problem as well, but you need to have that shooting. The Raptors really didn't address that. Now, Rob, my fifth seed, I'm star I've loved, I'm growing really with an infatuation with this team. I'm really starting to like them a lot. The Charlotte Hornets, they're bringing the buzz back for anybody who hasn't noticed yet. They are now the return to the Charlotte Hornets. Great color scheme with that uh, that really special t uh, teal like kind of purplish and that green really like their new jerseys but the Hornets Steve Clifford is a very good coach last year you really saw the new culture he implemented there he really made them a fundamentally sound team they didn't beat themselves with turnovers very young team there's a lot of room to grow here you look at their roster Kemba Walker Lance Stevenson is a huge addition to this team Michael Kidd Gilchrist Marvin Williams a power forward and Al Jefferson, I, I'm going to come out and say it, he's the best center in the league. 21.8 points per game last year, 10.88 rebounds per game, and 1.1 blocks per game. It's hard to find a center who really impacts the game as much as he did we saw in that series against the Heat how big his absence was for that team. Al Jefferson is just incredible. But the big thing is the addition of Lance Stevenson on the roster. Just his presence. Now, I've worried. I didn't, I'm didn't. i not a big Lance fan. I wasn't last year. I thought his mindset, he was a little immature. His attitude really just was a big reason why the Pacers had such a rough stretch in the second half, but I think Steve Clifford is the perfect coach for Lance Stevenson. Steve Clifford's a no-nonsense guy. He's, you're going to do it his way. You're going to do it the right way, and I don't think Frank Vogel really made him made Lance accountable last year. Steve Clifford will make Lance Stevenson accountable. He'll make him a better basketball player, and the Charlotte Hornets are definitely on the rise. Oh, they definitely are, Joe. However, for my number five seed, I'm going with the Miami Heat, Joe. Yes, you look at what they've lost. They lose LeBron James in the offseason. But I have liked the additions they picked up in Josh McRoberts, Danny Granger, and Luau Deng. Last year, Josh McRoberts was amazing. Come playoff time for Charlotte. Great passer. But the big thing I'm looking out for for the Heat is I'm very impressed with James Ennis, who in this preseason has averaged 16 points a game and 5.6 rebounds a game. And I expect him to have a big part for this team. And I expect Shabazz Napier in his first year to help with this Miami Heat team. Yes, they're going to fall a little bit this year because you know what? LeBron's not there, but Chris Bosh has to pick up the load and return to his numbers from when he was in Toronto. I think so, too. I mean, I, I think the the good thing for the Heat is that it's kind of point guard galore. I mean, you have Shabazz Napier, Norris Cole, Ennis as well. Uh, it's Mario Chalmers there, too. A lot of good guards on this team. And I'll get to the Heat in a minute because I do have them going uh, doing pretty well as well. But I'll go to the, my fourth seed first. I have the Washington Wizards at the fourth spot. I really like their starting lineup. Very solid. John Wall at point guard. Shooting guard Glenn Rice Jr. Normally, Bradley Beal would be there, but he's out for a six to eight weeks so Glenn Rice Jr. is no slouch to have there at small forward you have Paul Pierce power forward Nene center you have Marcin Gortat and then Otto Porter on the bench as well I think Bradley Beal's injury will be big because he's a really important piece to this offense he's continuing to grow and get even better but Glenn Rice Jr. has played very well in the summer league I think he's going to step in and really help them out production wise but there's just a lot of talent on this roster the starting lineup is excellent a lot of youth and I think adding the veterans like Paul Pierce they still have Andre Miller is a good balance of vet veterans with the youth but John Wall has to continue to grow as a leader sometimes I question his leadership and his focus but John Wall's talent is just undeniable. I think the Wizards are going to continue to grow, but they've got to grow, and John Wall's really got to continue to step up as the leader of this team. Totally agree with you on this one, Joe. I also have the Wizards going fourth. 
And Joe, once Bradley Beal comes back on the court, that is going to be one dominant offense to watch out for. You have Paul Pierce and Beal you have to worry about from shooting from the outside, and those guys will dominate from out there. Nene and Gortat did such an amazing job last year. But as you said, we have to look at John Wall. He has to be that true leader for this team. At times last year, you questioned some of the things he does. But after last year with the playoffs, I'm very impressed with how he keeps improving, and I think he's going to have a big year this year. There you go. Now let's go to the three. I actually have the Miami Heat at the three spot. I think the good thing for the Heat is Eric Spolster is going to stay true to this team's identity. Ball movement and defense has been the key, and I think they'll bring that back. Uh, their starting lineup, I don't know what they're going to do at point guard. I mean, they could go with Chalmers, Nor- Norris Cole, or Shabazz Napier. I would probably go with Norris Cole based on the way I've seen him. Mean, Chalmers hasn't played as well as the other two guards have in the preseason. Um, then you look at w- Dwayne Wade, Luel Deng, Udonis Haslam. Look, Wade... I mean, Bosch and Dang is not a bad big three, but we're seeing Dwayne Wade rapidly decline before our eyes, and that's going to be a big, big detriment to that team. But Chris Bosch has looked very sharp in the preseason. He plays very well around the basket, and I think he kind of he gets it. He knows he has to lead this team. He's got to be the guy who the offense re- revolves around. I think he's ready to accept that challenge, and I think we're really going to see Chris Chris Bosch return to that all-star, perennial all-star form that we were so used to in Toronto. Joe, for my number three seed, I'm going with the Hornets, Joe. Just the fact with Al Jefferson last year, we watched their games versus the Heat. Al Jefferson really dominated versus the Miami Heat with LeBron James, Wade, and Bosh. And now you add Lance Stevenson, a guy who had the most triple doubles last year with five. I think he's improved in his attitude. He put Kemba Walker into this situa- situation. Michael K. Gilchrist, this team is on the rise. And watch out for them as number three seed. I really see them dominating this year, especially feeding the ball of Jefferson in games. I'm telling you, bring the buzz back, baby. I am so excited to watch this Hornets team. I mean... Al Jefferson, love it. Lance Stevenson, watch it. This is going to be a very speedy team, flashy colors with the uniforms. It's going to be really exciting to watch Charlotte this year. Now I'm going to move to my number two team, the Chicago Bulls. And look, we all know at the end of the day, the Eastern Conference is going to come down to the Chicago Bulls and the Cleveland Cavaliers. I have the Bulls at the second seat. Now a lot of people are probably going to say they think the Bulls are going to take the one spot I think the Bulls will be the number one seed for about two months of the season I think after two months the Cavs are going to really gel together they're going to figure it out and from then on their talent alone is just going to be enough where they just run away with it but I like the Bulls at the second spot I mean you look at this lineup point guard Derrick Rose shooting guard Jimmy Butler small forward Mike Dunleavy power forward Paul Gasol center Joakim Noah and I mean their reserves are phenomenal Taj Gibson Tony Snell and Doug McDermott defense and ball movement win and the Bulls do both of those things really well Derrick Rose though presence changes it all he's got to stay healthy I mean there's no one else who makes as big an impact when he's on the floor for this team. They need him so much for his offense, for his ball movement, everything he does for this team. And the big thing for the Bulls is they drafted very well. Doug McDermott is going to be a perfect piece for this Bulls team because last year we saw they this is a team that struggles to get three-point production. Doug McDermott is going to be a guy who can just come right off the bench and hit a couple threes. Really like them drafting him. And Tony Snell, watched him a lot in the summer league. This is a a guy who's really getting better very good defender he reminds me a lot of a young Kawhi Leonard I think this is a guy who's really gonna his defense has always been there his offense is coming along it's another nice piece to another very good Chicago Bulls team Joe I have to agree with you on this one I also went with the Bulls at number two and the key for this team is Derek Rose staying healthy Derek was only able to play in 10 games last year before injuring his knee yet again And for this team to really do well, it's going to focus on Gasol and Noah. Noah's coming off his best defensive year last year where he had 11.3 rebounds per game. The guy also averaged 12.6 points per game. And I expect him and Gasol to really dominate down low in the post. And these guys are going to have a really great year this year. I like their bench coming off Doug McDermott. I loved him in college. And I can just see him firing away, hitting important three-pointers. And Taj Gibson is just a great backup. And this team, they're on the rise this year, Joe. I hear you. And now we go to the number one spot, the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
Everybody is going to be excited to see this team play. And the big thing we're all looking for is how is David Black going to fare? I think when the Cavs first made the hire, everybody was just, who's David Black? Mm. But we know who David Black is now. I think the thing I really like about the guy is he's very innovative. He's not afraid to try new things. He's kind of a guy who just buys in. You could tell he's a very guy, a f- familiar guy with his players. They buy into him. I like David Blatt a lot. But, I mean, the end of the day, the, the thing that's going to set this Cavs team apart is just there's not a lot of teams that can come close to matching this starting lineup. Point guard Kyrie Irving, shooting guard Deion Waiter, small forward LeBron James, power forward Kevin Love, and at center year they're going to have Anderson Vergeau or Tristan Thompson. That is hard to beat. Now, I think it's going to take time for this team to gel and build the chemistry. But you just look at this talent alone, and talent alone should be able to carry them. Now, the big thing for this team is uh, my philosophy is offense is a skill set, defense is a mindset. We know this team could do whatever you need them to do offensively. What's going to set them apart and make them the number one seed is if they buy in on the defensive end. And like I said, it's a mindset. LeBron's going to have to instill that into all of these guys. It's a mindset you have to play and really just grind it out on the defensive end. But I have no questions about this team. The youth, the speed, the ball movement will be there. It's just going to come down to defense and how well can they move the ball because the teams that win the championship in this league move the ball well and they buy in on defense. If the Cavs do that, I think at the end of the day, we might see them holding up the trophy. Oh, you have to give it to the Cavs, Joe. When you look at that roster, who, who, who other, which other teams do you see lining up versus that Cavs roster that could really dominate? When I look at that starting five, I'm just amazed because I'm like nobody can match up versus these guys. And then you look at the depth on this roster. Sean Marion, probably one of the best defensive pieces they could have picked up this offseason. Mike Miller is a great veteran, great guy with helping lead championships, great shooter from the outside. And I really see this team improving. Deion Waiters is definitely going to have to change his game this year. But I see Kevin Love, LeBron, and Kyrie. Just I think it's better than the big three we saw last uh, over the last couple of years with Miami with Bosh, Wade, and LeBron. No question. I mean, you just can't match that youth and that speed. Mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving is so young, and he's just going to keep on improving. And LeBron James, I love the way this guy has changed his game. LeBron does not focus on scoring. LeBron focuses on getting passes rebounding, and that's what I love about his game over the last couple years. Hard to find a guy who is that unselfish. Now, let's go into the Western Conference. We just did full East. Let's go to the West. Number with the. Let's go to the... Uh, we'll start the opposite way this time. We'll go number one. For number one for the West, I've got the LA Clippers. I think no new owner for them. Everyone's happy. There's no distractions. Doc Rivers gets another year to, to really get his hands on this team. I'm all in on the Clippers. Starting lineup I mean, Chris Paul, J.J. Redick, Matt Barnes, Blake uh, uh, Blake Griffin. I mean, Blake and DeAndre are two very big pieces to this team. But the thing that's going to put them over the top is Blake Griffin's got to continue to his- expand his game. I mean, we saw last year he's really doing a better job at expanding his mid-range jump shot. He's really got to continue to be more deadly shooter from the field because my knock on him for the first couple uh, years of his career was he just really can't play well enough away from the basket. He's expanding his game away from the basket more, and the more he can do that, the more this team will just be thrive. So I think Blake and the Clippers are in a very good spot going into this season. Joe, for my number one, I'm sticking with the San Antonio Spurs, the defending champions. Just you look at how their coach, Greg Popovich, has been an amazing coach over the last couple of years. And with this roster, no matter how old they get, this roster still finds a way to last, win over 50 games a year, and help dominate in the playoffs. And I feel that they, they're they just a very smart and intelligent team, and I'm keeping them at my number one. There you go. Hard to go. I'm going with the Spurs with the two spot. I mean, the big thing is we all keep waiting. When's Father Tom going to catch up to the Spurs? But I don't think it ever will because, I mean, you just look at this, this sustained greatness. It's leadership. It's stability. I mean, stability and leadership will take you so far. And we, We've just seen the ability of Tim Duncan and Greg Popovich, their philosophy, their way of doing things. It works, and it's sustained this greatness for a long time. I mean, the starting lineup, Tony Parker, Danny Green, Kawhi Leonard, Tim Duncan, 
Tiago splitter. It's not the best, but you know what? It works because they buy in on defense and they move the ball. They have better ball movement than any team in the NBA. And at the end of the day, when we can never count the Spurs out, and they're probably, I mean, at the end of the day, you probably got to put them as the favorite to get back to the championship at least. They have the talent to do it. When they move the ball as well as they do and they buy in on defense, anything's possible. And I think they have a legit chance to get back there this year. Mm-hmm. For my number two, Joe, I went with the L.A. Clippers. Now, yes, you know what? This team is going to improve under new ownership. But one thing I like is DeAndre Jordan coming back after an amazing defensive year last year. 13.6 rebounds per game, 2.5 blocks per game, his highest in the league. And you know what? The best thing that I think they did this offseason was at Spencer Hayes because now you finally have a guy who you could, another big man you could go to when you need to sit Blake Griffin or DeAndre Jordan who could fit a great defensive and offensive role. And I think that's the final piece that they need to finally succeed. Blake Griffin's going to continue. The way he played last year, he looked like he's an MVP player. And you put the way Chris Paul's been playing over the last couple of years, this team is on the rise. And I do see them in the, in the Western Conference Championship this year. There you go. Very good stuff. Before we get to the third seed and finish up the West, move more into college football. We've been going for 20 minutes now, so let's go to a quick break. When we come back, we will finish the Western Conference, move into college football. Big Shot Rob can drop the hammer on his New York Jets, so stay tuned with us, and we will be right back. <laughs> 